Good evening, everyone. Uh, at the start of the meeting, um, it's appropriate that I should share a message with you all, which I believe for those in the audience is in front of you. So this public meeting is being recorded. It's being streamed live on the internet. The recording will also be archived and available on Council's website. All care will be taken to maintain your privacy. However, as a visitor in the public gallery, you should be aware that your presence may be recorded. Thank you. The next um, item for this evening is to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather, the Baramadical people, and to pay my respects, our respects, uh, to elders past and present. The next item for this evening is um, uh, to receive, sorry momentarily, I'm on the wrong page, is to um, confirm the minutes of the most recent meeting of the Council, which was the 19th of December 2016. I've had the opportunity, obviously, to review the minutes, and I move that the minutes are adopted as a true and accurate record of the meeting. The next item for this evening is apologies. Um, I record the apology of former councillor Steve Issa, who is uh, the chair of the Smart Cities Advisory Committee and unfortunately is unable to join us this, this evening for his item, which is later in the agenda. We're all present, yep. Uh, the next item is declarations of interest. As I have previously advised the public gallery and now advise web streaming, I don't own any property in the city of Parramatta or local government area, and I don't believe I have any um, interest in any pecuniary interest in any of the matters on the current agenda. The next item are minutes of the administrator. The first of those is an update on the formation of the new city of Parramatta. Thank you, Administrator. Uh, this report is provided to Council to provide an update on the key activities regarding the formation of the new Council and the Administrator's engagement with the community. Uh, the Administrator, during the period since the last Council meeting, continued to meet with members of the community, including the 2016-17 launch of Cool Parramatta, the 2017 Parramatta Australia Day celebrations, and the Administrator also met with the Honorary um, Honourable David Elliott MP to discuss local priorities, particularly regarding regarding commuter parking in North Rocks. Uh, the report also notes that a further meeting of the Stronger Communities Assessment Panel took place in December to continue discussions on the 173 proposals Council received to fund uh, major projects. Uh, this program provides Council with an opportunity to kickstart uh, key community projects in our new local government area and a progress report will be provided to Council in the first quarter of, of this year. The Administrator and the Interim General Manager also took part in the Newington uh, Working Group on Saturday the 21st of January. Uh, this Working Group provides an excellent opportunity for effective communication and engagement between Council and the community at Newington. Uh, from a creation of the new Council perspective, Council has also progressed work in terms of our project Building Service Excellence for our customers. Uh, this project seeks to assess our services and identify opportunities to be more effective and efficient in our delivery to our community. Uh, we are working with an external supplier to um, review some of our key customer facing processes and that work now um, continues, the first phase of that work continues to April of this year. Uh, and finally, um, an important um, forum was held in um, Epping uh, regarding the Epping planning review. Uh, following the proclamation, the whole of Epping Town Centre is now part of the City of Parramatta and this creates an opportunity to review the vision and plans for the Epping Town Centre as part of one council. Um, and as part of this review, a number of state agencies have also agreed to work with council so that we can seek to improve the planning outcomes of Epping uh, for residents, commuters and the workers in that area. 
Thank you very much, Ms. Mills, for that summary of the paper for the audience and for those who may ever listen to this webcasting. Um, uh, it details the array of things that are underway across Council's full range of activities to ensure the success in the formation of the new City of Parramatta. Council receives and notes this report. The second item is item 5.2. It's a disclosure of the administrator's commitments, my commitments, for the period 10 December through to 3 February 2017. This is a transparency item. I believe that it's quite important that the community have an opportunity to understand the nature of the community engagements I undertake on their behalf, the media activities I undertake on their behalf, and also the range of meetings that I undertake as part of my duties, which are now reaching into the hundreds, but that's perfectly appropriate. It's there for transparency purposes. I move the Council receive and note this Administrator Minute. We now have three additional late Administrator Minutes for, your considera for my consideration. So the first item... The first item relates to the insertion of supplementary materials in council rate notices. And the report seeks council's approval to draft a policy about what will govern the information that can be included in and distributed with annual rates notices and quarterly um, instalment notices, the letters and emails that are sent to all ratepayers. The recommendation before me is that Council will develop a policy governing what information can be inserted with and attached to the annual and quarterly rates notices with the policy to be presented to the Council for adoption by August of this year. The second recommendation is that Council endorses that the object of the policy is to ensure that only Council documents that communicate its services and activities can be inserted with and attached to those rates notices. So just to emphasise, this policy will be developed, it'll be transparent, it'll be reported to Council before uh, August 2017, and its object is to ensure that when you open your rates notices, um, what you receive together with your rates is information from the Council on uh, services and activities only. I move that the this paper, the recommendations of this paper are adopted. The second Administrator Minute is a housekeeping matter um, and it serves to clarify the, that the Administrator has certain delegations. So the purpose of this minute is to clarify the, the scope of the Administrator's existing powers in respect of seeking independent advice on matters that can Im impact the Council from time to time and also to make clear that the powers of the Administrator uh, include the employment arrangements for the Interim General Manager. So the recommendation is that Council acknowledges and agrees that the Administrator may procure reasonable um, independent legal advice or other professional advice from time to time in respect of a matter impacting the Council. And further, the Council acknowledges and agrees that the Administrator may at any time make a decision to renew, extend or terminate the appointment of the Council's Interim General Manager consistent with the terms of the applicable contract for the Interim General Manager. So as I said, this is a housekeeping matter that confirms the delegations already provided to me through the proclamation. I move that this minute is adopted. The third minute that's in before me from, uh, is in relation to transparency and a desire to avoid perceptions of conflicts of interest in respect of council-owned land particularly that land which is classified as operational. And Council is seeking to amend the delegations of the City of Parramatta under the Local Government Act, the Noxious Weeds Act and other relevant legislation to make clear that we have appropriate safeguards to manage that potential for a conflict of interest. The argument has been put to me that while there is a recommendation in front of me to implement that delegations, that there 
is a need to seek further external legal advice before I adopt the recommendation. I accept that argument. And on that basis, I move that Council adopts in principle its intent. So, Council adopts the principle the Council's regulatory and property responsibilities will be separated through delegation and seek external legal advice to affect this principle for its, at its next meeting. Joy, I'm, I'm sorry, I should have said regulatory and property ownership. At its next regular, regular meeting, Joy, my apologies. It's just been brought to my attention that we intend to hold a special meeting at the end of this month for the purpose of considering the quarterly review, which is Council's report to the community on its activities over the quarter, and um, it's inappropriate to bring it to that meeting, so we'll bring it to the March meeting. I um, move that the resolution is adopted. Thank you. I believe that concludes all of the administrator minutes. The next item for this evening is to receive petitions. And I have received two petitions since Council's last meeting of the 19th of December. I have received a petition signed by a number of residents in Epping relating to Epping Forest Park or rather a development near Epping Forest Park, known to some as the Ostino development, known to others as the Bowling Club development, and known to others as the Tofty Mufflers site. The petition reads as follows. I, we, the undersigned, request and petition the administrator of the City of Parramatta to consider the following concerns in relation to the Ostino Property Group's planning proposal for the rezoning of land. And the address is given. The planning proposal includes the rezoning of the former Epping Bowling Club, site from the public recreation land to allow the building of a 20-storey apartment building, as well as another high-rise apartment block on the land in the north of Forest Park. It's another example of development currently underway, which is negatively impacting on the sustainability and living livability of Epping, and it's a massive increase in the number of dwellings for this site deemed suitable uh, under the Urban Activation Plan and the Local Environment Plan. So can you just confirm I'm to read the whole of the petition? Uh, you don't need to. You can just summarise what the petition says. Following that, there are a number of dot points that call upon uh, me to recognise uh, key objections raised by the community to this development. An intention, that a, a desire to keep the former Epping Bowling Club site in public recreation land with a preference for green open space. Um, objections in relation to height restrictions and a desire to maintain consistency with the current zoning arrangements, uh, preventing development that may overshadow Forest Park, preventing development that damages existing trees in the area, um, and a consideration that um, traffic and social infrastructure matters, which are currently under review, should be incorporated in any decision. And a desire to have adequate commercial space in Epping, including commercial space at this site. 
I have received the petition and I have met with the residents of this area and the petition providers. And I thank them for their interest in their community and their passion for their subject um, and their interest in the Council's project of the Epping Planning Review. I resolve that the petition is received and I have referred the petition to the appropriate officers to report. The next petition that I have received relates to um, a development in Toongabby at 21 and 21A Tux Road. The petition reads, regarding the rezoning of 21 and 21A Tux Road, Toongabby, we write to voice our strong objection to the rezoning under consideration for the above properties, which are part B4, mixed use, and, con and the construction of a higher density units. All of the surrounding properties in the area are low residential houses. And this, they, the petition goes on to say that this would have significant impulse and concerns for the individual and their family. Again, I've met with the residents of Tux Road and plan over the period in which the DA and the voluntary planning agreement is on exhibition together with a local member, Mark Taylor, to organise a meeting of these residents and the developer so that there can be an opportunity to further investigate their concerns. I resolve that the petition is received and I reference the appropriate and it has been referenced to the appropriate council officer to report. Thank you. We now move to the council papers uh, proper, um, if that's what they referred to. The other council papers is momentarily what I would describe it as. Uh, the first one being item 8.1, uh, variations to standards under clause 4.6 of the Parramatta LEP, the Auburn LEP, Holroyd LEP, the Hills LEP, the Hornsby LEP and SEP 1. Um, thank you, Administrator. So this is a regular report to Council which merely reports on planning decisions or development decisions where there have been a variation uh, to a development standards in accordance with the relevant clause, uh, uh, clause 4.6 of the five LEPs that operate within the City of Parramatta. Um, the, re the attachment identifies five developments in this period where there have been um, variations to development standards. Um, and I note that they apply to three of the five LEPs, Hills, Hornsby and um, Parramatta. It's reported to you for, uh, to receive and note the report. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, I've reviewed the matters, the variations that have been approved by um, I, the Independent Hearing and Assessment Panel, known as the IHAP, or um, under staff delegations and the reasons by which that variation was approved. And I resolve, uh, I've, I, re I resolve that the port report be received and noted. The next item is item 8.2 with regard to draft amendments to the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act. Ms. Weatherly. Um, thank you, Administrator. Um, so this report is a report to you, the Council, on um, proposed amendments to the Environmental Planning Assessment Act recently released by the Minister for Planning. Um, these deal with a number of matters and their clear objectives are to enhance community participation, improve the strategic planning framework, change and proposes change to the development assessment process, including the requirement that, uh, including the power for the Minister to compel councils to have an independent hearing and assessment panel to determine development applications, some change to the process for the consideration and determination of state significant development and in elevating the importance of design in the planning process by making this a new objective of the Act. It also has provisions to improve some of the compliance, enforcement and certification provisions of the Act. Um, broadly speaking, um, these are seen to be very positive changes. However, um, like many um, legislative changes, sometimes the, de the devil is in the detail and without the regulation and some of the explanation to it is difficult to see how that would work or what the full impact of those changes might be. Um, recently we were advised that 
the department is running some information sessions on these changes. Um, and that was notified um, after we wrote this report. We also were advised that the exhibition period for making submissions has also been ex extended. So um, on that basis, we would like to... We have provided some briefing to you to suggest that the recommendation be changed to simply note this interim report and that a further report come to, to the Council once we've been able to attend those information sessions and perhaps that may resolve some... Um, unresolved matters in our view in terms of the proposed changes. Thank you very much, Ms Weatherly. Um, I agree with uh, the reasonableness of your proposition that if there is an extension of time and further opportunities to communicate not only the Council's views but also to hear more about the strategic intent of New South Wales planning in this reform that it's prudent of me to defer this matter. Um, I resolved that the matter is deferred to allow further information and clarity and it will be considered for a more detailed report on the 13th of March. Thank you. The next item is item 8.3 and these are the minutes of the Heritage Advisory Committee of December 2016. Thank you, Administrator. Um, this report presents to you the minutes of the most recent Heritage Advisory Committee. Um, a number of key matters were discussed at that meeting, including um, um, updates were provided to the Heritage Advisory Committee on the new Civic Building, which is five and five to seven Parramatta Square, Prince Alfred Square, um, State Heritage Listing Proposal, the Museum of Applied Arts and Sciences, and the development application for the Parramatta North, North Parramatta Urban Renewal Precinct and also the um, future of, the, um, of another listing of, um, heritage listing of a council um, reserve. Um, the report in... One of the key issues out of the report was consideration of the expansion of the Heritage Advisory Committee and the report before you as well as the minutes go through that process of the consideration and to try and get a more a broader committee which would represent some of the um, areas not previously or currently represented on our Heritage Advisory Committee. At this time, this matter remains somewhat unresolved and it is recommended and I would like to change the recommendation to say that the issue of um, membership of the Heritage Advisory Committee simply be referred back to the committee for its further consideration. Thank you very much, Ms Weatherly. So uh, over the last, uh, at, at its most recent meeting, I didn't have the opportunity to meet with the Heritage Committee, I don't think. No, I didn't. Um, uh, but I commend them for their report and I have uh, considered the issues and the feedback that they have provided, including their ongoing interest in North Parramatta Urban Renewal and um, Council's continued engagement of them on this and other matters. Um, in relation to item B, I note um, the suggested changes to uh, the recommendation, which simply make clearer that the committee is deliberating that a selection committee's advice is yet to be considered by the Heritage Advisory Committee and hence there's no decision for me to make at this point in time. I look forward to their advice as to what additional members of the community I should appoint. I resolve to adopt the amended recommendations. The next item is 8.4, a voluntary planning agreement for 1 to 7 Carter Street and 23 Uruk Road, Lidcombe. Uruk? Um, thank you, Administrator. Um, this report makes recommendations around the negotiation of a possible voluntary planning agreement. Um, the council with the, with the new council boundaries, um, the Carter Street Precinct, which is a major urban renewal site um, is now within the city of Parramatta and we are starting to process and consider development proposals for this precinct. One of these is a development proposal at Carter Street and Urig um, Street um, dealing with a, a subdivision and a subsequent development of up to 858 dwellings across um, three sites. In the provisions of the Carter Street development control plan, there is mention of the opportunity for proponents to negotiate with council for a possible voluntary planning agreement 
for works in kind rather than um, payment of um, the Section 94A contribution. In this case, um, the proponent, um, its subsidiary of Meritons, have asked that we consider that as a possibility. Um, and the recommendation before you um, simply authorises the officers to consider that and commence negotiations. One of the principles of negotiation on a VPA where it replaces Section 94 is that we would need to be certain that the, the value of the works being contributed to Council was equal to or greater than the Section 94 contribution to justify the decision to enter into a, a voluntary um, planning agreement. And that will be part of the negotiations, determining whether or not the value of the works and the quality of the works being proposed are valuable to, to the community and would exceed what the Section 94 contribution would otherwise be. So the recommendation is just to authorise officers to enable them to commence those negotiations. Thank you very much, Ms Weatherly. Um, uh, I reflected on the statement that was made in the recommendations about a voluntary planning agreement in lieu of Section 94 contributions. But based on your further clarification of these issues, I see what it is is a negotiation uh, in relation to works in kind of equal or greater value um, that could be of benefit to um, the Carter Street development and the broader community. Uh, with that further clarification, I resolve that the um, uh, recommendations are circulated or adopted. The next item is item 8.5, proposed drainage easement in favour of 44 Um Street, Hermington. Thank you, Administrator. So the purpose of this report is to provide approval for a proposed easement at uh, 44 Um Street, Hermington. Council issued a deferred commencement development application for a dual occupancy on the site, subject to an easement being granted. There is a public stormwater drainage pipe at the back at Upjohn Park, and connection to this pipe is the only practical solution for the site. Public notification of the proposed drainage easement was conducted with no submissions received. Uh, Council received $8,900 as compensation payment from the owner for granting this easement, and the owner will be responsible for the construction cost. So I request the administrator adopt the recommendations contained in this report. Thank you very much. It seems a practical solution with appropriate consultation and consideration of Council's commercial interest. I resolve to adopt the recommendations as circulated. The next item is item 8.6, a proposed closure of part of Morton Street, Parramatta and the transfer of ownership to the adjoining land owner. Thank you, Administrator. So the purpose of the report is to consider the permanent closure of part of Morton Street, Parramatta, 155 square metres. It's a very small piece of a cul-de-sac that's being chopped off. Uh, it's part of a development consent on the site for a mixed-use development. And council and the developer enter into a voluntary planning agreement, which requires, as part of this, that this part of Morton Street to be closed and transferred to the developer at no cost. In return, the developer would create and build a greater road network in and around the development. Public notification has occurred on the site with no submissions received and I request the Administrator adopt the recommendations in this report. Thank you very much. So I understand that this is the next step of an extended process of negotiation and uh, planning approval in relation to this uh, particular development and the, it's, it's the next step to implement decisions of the former Parramatta City Council. <coughs> Given that, um, uh, I have considered the issues, considered your advice, considered the consultation that's been undertaken and, move and resolved to adopt the recommendations as circulated. The next item is you again, Craig. Item 8.8, .8, uh, five parameters... My apologies, I have missed proposed drainage easement in favour of 8 and 10 Lilypilly Street in Epe. Thank you. Another easement. <clears throat> so the purpose of the report is to consider a drainage easement and land known as West Stepping Park. So this is a site that we actually took over from Hornsby. 
So prior to the proclamation, the Southlake properties were part of the Hornsby LGA. Hornsby had issued approval for a deferred commencement on this site. However, this has been transferred over to Parramatta and the City of Parramatta issued a, deferred commence, a new deferred commencement termination for a one and two lot subdivision, subject to creation of an easement on the site. We have underway the development of West Stepping Park and during the excavation on that site, we found an existing stormwater type that was connected to the property at 10 Lilypoli Street. The drainage pipe has been relocated and connected to the Council's new stormwater system via a drainage easement. At the same time, it was deemed prudent to make provision for a drainage from water from upstream from the property at 10 Lily Police Street in the same easement. Public notification of the easement was conducted with no submissions received. Under the original Hornsby Agreement, the Council was to receive $2,640, being the compensation to Hornsby Council. We are accepting the same amount as that was adopted by Hornsby. However, the new owners have agreed to pay 50% of the cost of the new pipe under, in West Stepping Park. So I request the Administrator adopt the recommendations of this report. Again, this sounds like the sensible result of investigations and cooperation with the landowner about the most appropriate ways to deal with stormwater on a subdivision site, um, as including the discovery of an additional stormwater asset, not, um, which I gather was not included in Hornsby's asset transfer. Um, uh, again, I commend you on consultation and due diligence in relation to this project and move that the resolution is adopted. The next item is 8.8 .8, uh, in relation to 5 Parramatta Square Early Works Development Application Owner's Consent. Thank you, Administrator. So the purpose of this report is to obtain endorsement to lodge a development application for the early works comprising excavation and other civil works for Five and Sarah and Paramount Square, which is the location of the new civic building. Paramount Square has been designed with an integrated basement below the entire precinct. The developer of four and six Paramount Square site has received development approval for those buildings and basement levels, and work will be commencing on that site shortly. To ensure Council can meet the construction timelines for the new civic building, it is proposed that three, up to three development applications be lodged for the new civic building. So the development applications be lodged in stages. Lodging the development application for the early works will enable coordination of the excavation across the whole site and including the integrated basement. Because the design of the five Paramount Square building and floor plans require further internal stakeholder consultation and community consultation, this, if we were to have one DA, this would delay the 5PS basement works, and that's why we've separated the DAs. The excavation and early works will be approved, will be drawn from the approved Paramount Square development budget for the new civic building. The early works DA considers a possible addition of two basement levels, which has been requested by Walker, which is currently being assessed by Council. Approval to proceed with the additional basement levels will be subject to a further council approval as part of the tender process. I request the administrator adopt the recommendations to separate into one, three DAs at this stage, one for the early works being the approval for today. Thank you very much. Again, it seems a prudent response to ensure that development across the site is undertaken in a rational way. Um, and that excavation works are occurring in a very similar time frame across the various sites. Um, I understand that the approval that is sort of made today is in relation to um, landowners' consent for the lodgement of early works for the de development application um, in relation to the basement area, and that the application that would be made would be for the three levels, but that I will receive further advice as to the economic and other prudency of the three levels, and so this is exercising an option. And on that basis, I resolve to adopt the recommendations as circulated. Thank you. The next item is acquisition of an easement for the development of Hospital Farm Reserve Walking Path in Northmead. Oh. 
be me again. Thank you, Administrator. This is actually the reverse. We, as Council, are looking at, at uh, acquiring an easement over to Redmond Road, Northmead, for the development of a walking path. So this report is to consider the acquisition of this easement for pedestrian access. So Council is constructing a new walking path over part of Hospital Farm Reserve along the northern foreshore of Toongabby Creek. A section of the proposed footpath pro proposes topography difficulties and as a result the walking path needs to traverse private land to connect with the existing street footpath network. So it's quite a complex area. The owners of 2 Redmount Road have provided in principle agreement to an easement of approximately 19 square metres. Council will be responsible for the costs relating to the acquisition of the easement, constructing of the walking path and the ongoing maintenance for a period of at least 10 years. The cost of the acquisition has been included in Council's operating budget and this really does link the full path. So if we don't have this easement, it makes it very difficult and more costly to produce a path. So I request the Administrator adopt the recommendations contained in this report. Thank you. Um, again, it seems a practical response to, to topographical and um, terrain issues. Uh, thank you for your due diligence. I resolve to adopt the recommendations as circulated. The next item is item 10.1, Parramatta Cycleways Advisory Committee Minutes. Um, thank you, Administrator. Um, so this report um, presents for your consideration the minutes of all the cycleway committees from um, the last year um, and goes through and notes many of the achievements of the Cycleways Committee, including a new member, Ray, Pri Ray Rice, the former CEO of Bicycle New South Wales, um, which is, our, of course, the peak um, cyclist advisory body. Um, we, the committee's also been, um, and I note, perhaps a driving force of um, behind the new cycling map, but I thought perhaps it's really like a cycling force rather than a driving force, and has worked with um, our sustainability team to help design and deliver that as an outcome. They've also provided advice throughout the year for Council on many of its um, cycling initiatives and, and bikeways. Um, key in this um, uh, report to you is a consideration, again, of additional, potentially additional members um, for the Cycleways Committee to make sure that it um, can, is representative of the whole of the City of Parramatta, wherever that's possible. And um, it is recommended that Bernard Carpenter... Um, Darren Capes, Tavis and Simon Moore be appointed as um, additional members of Council's Cycleways Advisory Committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms Weatherly. I've read the minutes of their meetings and declare that I am a user of their resources in terms of um, uh, information on cycle routes within the LDA. Um, I thank them for their work to seek out new members and for their deliberations around those new members, which bring together a better picture of the much broader LGA that is now the City of Parramatta. Um, I resolve to adopt the minutes of those meet I resolve to receive and note the minutes of those meetings and to appoint the three additional members, being Bernard Carpenter, Darren Capes Davis, and Simon Moore as members of Council's Cycleway Advisory Committee. I look forward to meeting the three new members. The next, the next item is 11.1, uh, which relates to the draft Sue Savage Park and Reynolds Park Master Plan. Thank you, Administrator. So Sue Savage Park excuse me, and Reynolds Park are both located adjacent to each other at the north of... Um, the, our local government area in Toon Gabri, adjacent to the Blacktown local government area. It's quite a significant um, park holding, some 17 hectares in size, and already providing important recreational facilities to those communities. That includes a very popular children's playground, some barbecue equipment, cycleway and the like. This master plan has been developed to really enable us to identify the priority works and improvements for this area um, to be invested in over the next 10 to 15 years. It's a draft plan and it's recommended that it be placed now on public exhibition in order that we can receive further community feedback as to um, the works being proposed and the priorities highlighted in this report. 
And in addition to the recommendations for public exhibition, I've suggested a minor change here, Administrator, um, just to acknowledge that as part of that exhibition period, we would also send correspondence to local members of Parliament and other stakeholders that we know who are using that area. And that once we've completed the exhibition period, we'll come back to Council with a final report incorporating any particular feedback we receive from the community. Thank you very much. Um, I've had the opportunity to go to the park and also to have a look at the master plan and to look at the extent of the community engagement and how the community's views have been represented here in this master plan. Um, it's, it's a very exciting master plan um, with lots of opportunities for younger members of this community to have uh, recreational outcomes. Um, skate parks, other things. And so I really look forward to hearing the community's views as to whether or not this has achieved the right balance between their expectations of the park. Um, I resolve to adopt the amended resolutions. The next item is 11.2, the Access Advisory Committee meeting of the 20th of December and also its new members. Thank you. Uh, yes, so this meeting was held, as you say, on the 20th of December. Uh, the dis discussion items on this night included the Aboriginal Reconciliation Action Plan. Also, the um, photo exhibition project from last year was reported on, the progress with Parramatta Square, and an accessibility audit which is underway in Parramatta Park that committee members were interested in receiving information on. As you say, we've received requests through an expression of interest process for our people um, interested in becoming members of the Access Advisory Committee and their applications have been assessed and are recommended for Council's approval. Um, so we're recommending two new members, Christine Rigby and Samia Makuk. Thank you very much. Um, obviously this is an incredibly part, important part of Council's uh, community engagement to reach a group of people who um, are often quite hard to reach but who have very strong interests in the city's future. So I thank them for their work. I also thank them for their work to seek out additional members from the much larger LGA, which is the city of Parramatta. So um, I very happily appoint their two recommended candidates and note that, Christine, that you are here in the audience. So thank you very much for joining. Um, so Christine is known to me and to most people in the council uh, through her involvement in the Local Representation Advisory Committee. Christine's a, a resident of Newington and has strong links to disability networks and exercised um, some responsibilities in relation to the former Auburn Council. Um, I also um, thank Ms Samantha Mahook, um, who's a resident of Regent's Park, who works with um, disability service organisations, um, including City of Param Parramatta residents, um, and is a strong advocate for people with disabilities. Um, I look forward to meeting her. Um, I resolve to adopt the minutes of the Access Advisory Committee meeting as received and noted, and uh, to appoint Christine Rigby and Samitha Mahuk um, as members of the Access Advisory Committee. Thank you, Christine. The next item is 11.3, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Advisory Committee meetings of October, November and November. Thank you, Administrator. So yes, this reports on the minutes of the meetings for both the 25th of October and the 22nd of November, which were the normal ATSI committee meetings. They also held an extraordinary meeting earlier in November in order, for, in order for the committee to be able to provide input into the development of Council's vision and priorities for the City of Parramatta. Um, you'll note in the minutes um, it's recorded your own attendance at that meeting on the 25th of October um, in order to discuss a number of items of interest to the committee, including the community engagement processes of council, nominations for the Australia Day Awards and the Stronger Communities Fund program, which was currently um, in play at the time. Um, at the following meeting, um, it's also noted the Interim General Manager was in attendance and discussed with the committee progress on the Reconciliation Action Plan and Council's ongoing commitment to various projects, including NAIDOC Week and other projects of interest to the members. Um, 
during the meetings, other things that were discussed and with which Council received um, feedback from the committee members on included the Parramatta Cultural Plan, a brochure that's being developed on bushwalks for Parramatta, on Parramatta Square, and also on the Sydney Festival Program. It's recommended that the minutes of each of these meetings be noted and received. Thank you very much. I resolve to note and receive the minutes and provide my assurance to committee members, who none of whom are present, um, that the matters that they raise with me have been conveyed to the consultation process on Parramatta Square and to the Stronger Communities Fund Assessment Panel. And I have every confidence that the matters raised in relation to the Reconciliation Action Plan with the General Manager have been conveyed. Thank you very much for your continued involvement. Item 11.4 is the next phase of our ongoing partnership with this committee. Yes, thank you, Administrator. So this um, report is separate to the minutes and it's actually a review that was undertaken of the operations of the um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Advisory Committee, which was initiated by the previous council, the Parramatta City Council. An independent reviewer was um, engaged to consult with the committee members and other stakeholders and to review the best practice examples from around Australia of how local government and other government agencies have um, undertaken these sorts of advisory structures. The review found that overall the ATSI committee functions well and is providing valuable advice to council on a range of issues and that it is well supported by council staff. It also identified some opportunities to further enhance the governance around the structures of the um, committee, including the membership arrangements and the way that the committee engages with councillors or the elected representatives of council. It's recommended that council adopts the recommendations from the independent review, including some changes to the ATSI committee's terms of reference um, and some clarification around the referral processes for the direct reference panel as well. Each of them are outlined in the recommendations to the report. Thank you very much, Ms. Coleman, and thank you to the committee and to the independent reviewer. Um, I, I understand that council staff have confirmed that with the committee, the uh, shared understanding of these recommendations. In my view, this moves the committee to a slightly more strategic basis, forming an annual work plan and greater clarity about the, how and uh, the opportunities as to how it wishes to influence council and at and its activities. The committee has for a little bit of time suffered in relation to matters of quorum and I hope that these um, changes to the committee's terms of reference and membership uh, will, or will have the effect of um, uh, enabling the committee to be even more effective in its activities. So I resolve that the recommendations as circulated are adopted. We are now at item 12.1, which is New Parramatta Aquatic Leisure Centre. You recall, of course, that Council at its most recent meeting in December received a report updating on progress related to a number of matters with our aquatic facilities. And this report provides a further update in relation to the development of a new aquatic leisure centre for Parramatta, the interim arrangements for, what, for swimming in Parramatta once the Parramatta War Memorial Swimming Pool closes at the end of March, and the future operations of Granville Swimming Centre as well. Uh, the report, importantly, also outlines the key findings from research and analysis that has recently been undertaken into the recreation and aquatic um, needs of the local community and the current or recent trends in terms of facilities development. Um, what are communities looking for now and into the future to ensure that the new development of a facility for Parramatta is able to meet those needs, um, hopefully for the next 50 years and more, as the um, existing pool has. Uh, the report um, also outlines, or it recommends a process for community consultation around those findings now to really test with the, with the community what the priorities are for the inclusion in a new facility and that we um, align that work with the work being undertaken by Parramatta Park Trust to receive feedback from the community, not only on the overall master planning for the Mays Hill Precinct, but importantly on a preferred site for where a new aquatic um, leisure facility would go in that precinct. 
Um, the report also outlines um, so the progress on the interim arrangements, as I said, and table tonight, um, Administrator, you will see a further briefing note on that with some of the progress, in particular in relation to the work being done by Infrastructure New South Wales um, in terms of um, the interim arrangements and what's referred to as the, um, a, there it is, the Interim Recreation Swimming Pool Management Plan. Um, so I'm proposing, um, Administrator, two additional recommendations this evening, which I'll read as they weren't in part of the paper. The first is that Council notes the continuing efforts to develop the interim swimming arrangements for Parramatta, including relocation of the Parramatta Memorial Swimming Club, um, the commitment of our neighbouring aquatic facility providers to provide free seniors access on Tuesdays, matching what was available in Parramatta, and the ongoing investigations with the Department of Education and Communities regarding future public um, use of swimming pools within schools. Secondly, that Council notes um, confirmation from Infrastructure New South Wales that the Interim Recreation Swimming Pool Management Plan is being finalised and will be released this month with the supporting communication materials. Importantly, what the briefing note outlines, Administrator, is the results of recent consultation that we've undertaken with Infrastructure New South Wales that have highlighted um, some of the community's awareness about the proposed changes in Parramatta, but also the importance of um, ensuring that all current users of the facility are aware of its closure and have an opportunity to consider what those in interim arrangements will be and how they will make best use of those. And that campaign will commence from next week. Finally, I just draw your attention to the last item within the report which relates to Granville Swimming Centre um, and note that the um, arrangements with Cumberland Council have now been um, agreed to and finalised, um, which saw an extension to the, the existing transitional services agreement under somewhat revised terms, but for a period of just two months in order that Cumberland could be better prepared to take on the full operation of that facility. Um, but it's now expected that that will take place from the 1st of April. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms Coleman. So this is an issue obviously incredibly topical across the community, but also um, amongst pool users. And while on some level I share the community's frustration with the, uh, the, uh, the fact that uh, the pool will close and it will take some time until a new pool can be in place, I also believe that it is very important that Council approaches the design of the pool in full engagement with the community, having due regard to uh, modern approaches to aquatic facilities, what best practice is, community engagement about a preferred location, all of the attributes of a pool, um, so that an investment that will serve a community for 50 or more years um, meets that community's needs. I commend the Council on the progress that's been made in terms of interim uh, pool arrangements and hope that over the coming weeks we'll be communicating to seniors that there will be places to swim for free on Tuesdays, as is their current expectation, and also that a site's been, a home has been secured for the swim club until the new pool is in place in Parramatta. We're working hard to, uh, 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 we, uh, the council, is working hard to ensure that the swim school can also have a home as um, it's important not only for children's safety but also in relation to the capacity of other swim schools in the area to absorb those children. Absorb those children enrolments is what I really meant to say there. Um, so I note the progress that has been achieved. In particular, I'm very pleased that the Stage 1 Master Plan has identified two sites at the pool that have the potential for uh, aquatic facilities. Parramatta Park Trust is in a consultation process at the moment for master plan, and I urge members of the community to express their views um, so that we can move to the next step of a secure location. Um, equally, for the opportunities that will be in front of individuals in the community as to the elements of a new pool, please take the time to express your views, there'll be every opportunity. Um, and we will communicate with pool users as interim arrangements are 
continue to develop and then are finalised. So I resolve to adopt the recommendations as amended, um, which reflect not only the work of the Council, the work of our partners, Parramatta Park Trust, uh, the pools that are in partnership with us to provide facilities for the residents of Parramatta, in particular Sydney Olympic Park, Sydney Olympic Park Pool and Granville Pool, which are providing facilities for the future, their interim use for those users, and um, note the extension arrangements for Granville Pool. Progress is being made and we remain committed to the development of a new pool as quickly as possible. I believe I'm now at item 12.2, Riverside Advisory Board meeting of the 14th of April and the 9th of June 2016. Thank you, Administrator. This report provides information on those um, meetings that you've just mentioned, the 14th of April and the 9th of June. And it should be noted that the minutes of the board meetings of the 11th of August and 13th of October have actually already previously been reported to Council. So the items discussed at the meetings um, include consideration of the draft cultural plan and engagement with the board on that, on that topic, the replacement of Connect Studios and their renaming as Studio 404, the proposal to undertake a business analysis regarding current and future theatre provision in the city. The draft Riverside strategic plan and updates regarding council amalgamations and implications for the board membership. It should be noted that um, the more recent minutes that have been adopted by council actually present a, a more updated picture of the board's discussions. So the recommendation before you is to receive and note the minutes of the 14th of April and the 9th of June. Thank you very much, Ms. Grasso. I receive and note the minutes of these two meetings and note the progress uh, on those matters advised in minutes that I have previously received. Thank you very much. All right, I am now at item 13.1. The location of council meetings up until the 13th of June 2017. Thank you, Administrator. Uh, this paper seeks uh, Council to endorse the proposed meeting locations of Council meetings from Monday the 27th of February to Tuesday the 13th of June, the next six months. Um, those locations are outlined in the report and continue to support Council's initiatives of having Council meetings across the LGA in community locations. Thank you very much. And I note that the date of 13th of June simply reflects um, uh, the, the growing clarity about the availability of this site as Parramatta Square develops. I resolve to adopt the recommendations as circulated and look forward to our meetings in Ermington, Epping, Newington and Wentworth Point. The next item is item 13.2, the Major Projects Advisory Committee, their Charter Review. Thank you, Administrator. So this purpose of the report is a bit of housekeeping. Uh, really, we're asking for a re the endorsement of a revision to the MEMPAP Charter, which is the ma Major Projects Advisory Committee that actually advises Council on, on major projects over $5 million. So we've had some review, a legal review on the actual charter, and um, there's a couple of recommendations. And the recommendations are that uh, we amend the number to a minimum of three members of the impact committee. That a conflicts of interest declaration be prepared for each member at the start of each financial year, so that we actually know if there's any conflicts during the process. And that a quorum for a meeting of at least two members for a quorum. So really what I'm asking is for the uh, administrator to note the legal advice that we've had on the impact charter and the, the, the advice to make some changes and that we adopt these amendments to the charter. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Craig, um, for your advice and your presentation of the item and for your staff's work on this item. Um, I've had the opportunity to speak to the chair of the committee and uh, his confirmation that these changes are supported by the current members of the MPAC committee. And for the benefit of the community, I confirm that the objective of the committee has not changed. 
And this, the objective of this committee reflects the importance of having expert advice available to the Council as it undertakes complex um, matters. In particular, the primary objective of the committee is to provide Council with independent assurance in relation to risk identification, mitigation, and to assist Council in its decision making as a property owner, not as a statutory owner, in respect of any development opportunities involving Council land or controlled land with a project greater than five million, and major projects involving the Council that are referred to it by the Council or by the Council's general manager. So this committee is an important part of the assurance system of the Council. So I, um, I thank Clayton Utes and the Major Advisories Committee for their the review that they've undertaken and I accept their advice and I resolve to adopt the recommendations as circulated. The next item is item 13.3, the investment report for December 2016. Thank you, Administrator. So the purpose of this report, this is a regular report to Council, just to provide an update on the performance of Council's investments. So for the period of December, this report is reporting on, Council had a closing balance of $227.7 million and we held an average portfolio of $231.3 million during the month of December. December we had a, a pretty good return month with an annualised return of 3.8% and we continue to perform above the uh, Osborne Bank Bill in Index with, uh, on a 12 month basis for December. We were 1.35% above the index, which is a good result. Council continues to hold a, very, uh, a variety of um, investments based on what we're allowed to under the Act. And at the, at the month of uh, December, we had a very good performance on our, uh, what we call our listed funds, our managed funds. We have a little bit of managed funds which we're able to hold, and we had a return of just over 7% for the month, which is a good return. It's reflective of what's going on in the share market. Uh, our term deposits are still performing reasonably well because we've got some long-term deposits and still returning about 5%. So in terms of the month of December, uh, we had, I can confirm, that um, all Council's investments comply with the investments policy and that of the Act and the regulations of Council and that there was no deviations from the policy. Thank you very much. So for the benefit of the public gallery and anybody watching, this is a transparency and assurance uh, device that's about ensuring that funds that are managed in, by the... Uh, Funds of the Council that are being managed are being managed appropriately, commercially and transparently. Thank you for the report and um, sounds like good performance in the context of the market conditions. The next item is item 13.4, which relates to the appointment of additional members to Parramatta's independent advisor. Independent Hearing and Advisory Panel. Um, thank you, Administrator. I haven't got turned up. Um, this report considers um, two additional members for the um, Independent Hearing and Assessment Panel, two very experienced um, um, planners, one in particular, uh, and one with a um, sustainability background which will add to the depth and the quality of the people for our panel. It's also been demonstrated that we do need quite a few people um, allowing for um, leave and the fact that from time to time we need a larger panel to deal with more complex um, planning proposals. Uh, so it is recommended that Helen Deegan and Stella Whittaker be appointed and that the delegation of authority be amended to include their names to um, that delegation to ensure that they're able to um, operate within the Independent Hearing Assessment Panel. Um, it also discussed in this report the fact that the minutes had been, um, been proving problematic, problematic as a confirmation at the following meeting, as often the following meeting would have different members of the panel, um, and therefore a minor administrative um, process has been put in place to enable um, the chair of the panel um, to confirm the minutes rather than having to have the confirmation as an item on the next uh, meeting of the IHAP. So um, it recommended that those with, those with the appointment of additional people and just noting um, the, the way in which we'll handle um, confirmation of minutes. 
Thank you very much for your continued investment in this very important device to ensure community confidence in development decision making in the LGA, but also developers' confidence that the system is robust and predictable. Um, the extension of membership will improve the functioning of the committee, and it sounds like the delegation of um, responsibility for the approval of the membership to the chair will improve the um, ease and the period of time before those, counts, those minutes of the independent hearing and assessment panel are published. So good reforms on both levels. Um, the, for members of the community, members meetings of the independent hearing and assessment panel are open. So if you wish to see their activities, uh, you are very welcome to do so. Their minutes are published on Council's website, uh, perhaps even more quickly now than they have been in the past. And very soon, Council will be implementing measures to ensure that those who have participated or those who have attended the Independent Hearing and Assessment Panel can provide immediate feedback on the quality of that experience and, in particular, their confidence in the fairness of the process. So I resolve to adopt the recommendations as circulated. The next item is item 11, uh, sorry, 13.5, the Smart City Advisory Committee. Um, thank you, Administrator. Um, this report um, recommends uh, appointment of persons to the um, Smart City Advisory Committee. Um, the Council has been working for some time in um, developing its opportunities through Smart City activities and a number of EPAR strategies in establishing the Para Connect Committee, Committee, which occurred back in August of 2010. With the proclamation of the City of Parramatta, the Council at its meeting of the 11th of July um, last year resolved to appoint Mr Stephen Izza as the Chair of the new um, Smart, Smart City Connect Advisory Committee. And we have since then sought additional members for that committee. It was resolved at that time that the committee should have a relatively small but um, effective membership of between five and seven uh, members um, and ensuring that was a diverse group of people who could provide true vision to the committee and help guide the implementation of um, the future iterations of the Smart City uh, Master Plan. Um, since that time, we have considered um, three people for, for um, inclusion on the Smart City Advisory Committee. This is being conducted as an um, interview process with um, uh, possible members uh, in consultation with the Chair and yourself. Um, and we are recommending three new members for the um, Advisory Committee. They are Mr Ben Meeks, CEO and founder of Strategic Advisory um, Firm, Transformery and Chief Investment Officer of Venture Capital Fund Black Opal Ventures, Oliver James, a partner of Ernst Young, Government and Public Sector Leader, Economic Advisory Group, and Lakshmir Logathasan, who is the New South Wales Young Woman of the Year in 2014, founder and coordinator of the Laptop Project, um, University of Western Sydney Vice Chancellor, Leadership Scholar, University of Western Sydney Aspire Leader, and the 2015 New Colombo, Colombo Plan Scholar. Um, it is recommended that those persons be appointed um, to the committee and we will continue and we hope to have the first meeting of that committee um, very shortly. Thank you very much, Ms Weatherly, and I thank um, the chair of the committee and also Jeff King, the um, head of the Future Cities Group of Council, for their advice on this matter. I've had the opportunity to meet with Ben, Oliver and Lakshmi, um, uh, they are very fine recommendations. Ben brings experience in strategy, venture capitalism, and his own um, experience as an entrepreneur to this role. Oliver brings extensive experience in infrastructure and some of the cutting-edge areas of, um, of service delivery, in particular in relation to the application of behavioural insights. And Lakshmi is not only a local and a young woman of the year, but also an entrepreneur in her own right. Um, 
together with the chair, I think they'll make a powerful contribution to this area. Um, I move that the resolution is adopted. Right. Now, before we go to closed session, I would like to bring to everybody's attention one additional matter. Uh, for a number of years, Jane Mills has served the council in a variety of um, capacities and provided uh, excellent governance, um, strong strategic insights, um, but also the capacity to bring together lots of particular and important consumer and governance reforms of the council. Her work in relation to the city of Parramatta um, has been extraordinarily valuable to me um, as an individual and I believe to the community and equally her work in relation to Fit to the Future and customer service reforms to the former Parramatta City Council is also valued. So on behalf of myself and also I'm sure uh, the former council, I would like to present you with a small gift. For the benefits of the public gallery who well know my view about these things, I assure you I paid for the flowers, not the ratepayers. <laughs> All right, now we move to what's called the closed session, which is where I consider matters that either have legal confidentiality or commercial confidentiality. For those of you who wish, you can return at the end of the closed session to hear a recording of the resolution um, of those matters. Thank you for your attendance this evening. Welcome back, everyone. Um, thank you for your attendance. I'll now ask the general manager to report on the items that were considered in the closed session. Thank you, Administrator. So there were three matters considered during the uh, closed session. Uh, the first one relates to uh, the outcome of the tender assessment for the installation of a 100 kilowatt solar photovoltaic system at Council's Rydalmere Operations Centre and Council um, resolved to award the tender to uh, Autonomous Energy, PTY Limited, uh, for the installation of that system uh, for the sum of $124,656.94. The second item at 14.2. Advise Council on the result of tenders invited for design consultancy services for the pedestrian and cyclist bridge between Morton and Alfred Streets, Parramatta. Um, Council resolved to accept the tender submitted by Bonacci Group, Queensland PTY Limited. For, for those design consultancy services uh, at a total sum of $684,700. In addition, um, I'm a little bit caught on the hop here further that a review of Council's conditions of tendering policy be undertaken by the relevant section of Council for presentation to Council in May 2017 on the management of late tender submissions as suggested within the probity report for this particular tender process. The third item considered under a suspension of um, regular um, processes was the procurement process for Council's transformation project and Council resolved um, in accordance with section 55.3.1 of the Local Government Act uh, to um, appoint the existing provider for a further period between March and the 31st of December 2017, uh, noting that Council's standard procurement process has not been undertaken due to the <coughs> urgency of the requirement for service and the need for continuity of the service provision. Those were the matters uh, decided upon and we then came back into normal session.
Thank you very much, everyone, for their participation, and thank you for the members of the gallery uh, for our historic first web streaming of council meetings. Thank you very much.